Thank you. The next paper will be presented by me, Shaima Mohammed, and the topic of, my, of our paper is uh, open source software support for field experiments of vehicular ad hoc networks. Okay. So as we've seen that the technology has been advancing at a very rapid pace, and uh, this has also led to one of the innovations called ad hoc networks, in which each of the node in the network, or perhaps since it's a vehicular network, so we can call the node as a car, each of the car acts as a sender and a receiver. So it acts as a router dynamically. Now, VANET. VANET is uh, an abbreviation for vehicular ad hoc networks. It is actually a type of mobile ad hoc networks where the cars are actually acting as the nodes in the network and each of the cars is exchanging information with other cars within the network. Now, what is the aim of having vanets? We know that these days the cars are having uh, sensors and a lot of information they are getting from within the car surrounding of, of one single car. But now we need to take it to a larger perspective. We need more cars communicating with each other, and we need to have information of what's happening in the car in front of you, what's happening to the car next to you, so that we, each of the cars is more aware of the surroundings. And the aim of this vanet uh, is to improve the road safety in general and uh, manage the traffic more uh, efficiently and for infotainment, that is exchanging of videos or music while you're on the go in the cars. Now, basically, there are two methods of studying vehicular ad hoc networks, or VANETs. The first one, which has been uh, done all these years, this topic is pretty new. Since the past 10 years, they have started studying on this. So all these years, most of the researchers have, uh, have studied and based on simulation software, such as the Network Simulator 2, which is a very common uh, software, which is an open source software. And then it's... Uh, the next version of NS2 was NS3, which is not quite popular now, but people are learning to use it. And then Qualnet and Opnet and Glomosim are other examples of these open source software simulation. The second method of studying vanets is through field testing or prototyping, in which we actually use the equipment inside the car to test how exactly they are acting and how the information is being collected and how efficient it is. So this is done by deploying the technologies and putting them into test in real life scenarios on the roads. Uh, a number of FOSS tools have been developed, have been uh, used for this research project, which we've done. The first one is the Linux operating system, which supports a variety of hardware platforms, such as the audio, video cards, number of GPS, network cards, and all these things are supported by this operating system, which is an open source software. And it is also very efficient for creating and supporting ad hoc network links within a network. And inside this project, which we have done, the field tests were done using the Ubuntu 14.04 version of operating system. A uh, number of language, uh, C programming language has been used for doing the coding of the program. And as we know that C programming is the most popular one used for the coding involved inside the kernel and the auxiliary softwares developed inside the Linux-based operating systems. And it's also a very commonly used language for designing and building open source software tools and projects. AWK was another language which was used, and it was used for data extraction. And since we were having a lot of data inside, the, inside the, the cars being collected, so we needed to filter out some of the data which we really needed. And so the AWK language was used. <clears throat> the next uh, software, open source software, which was used was the Wireshark Packet Tracer. It is a cross-platform to study. It can also be used on other operating system, and it's a graphical user, user interface software which basically analyzes your network and it helps, you, it helps you evaluate how the packets are being received and what is the strength of your network. It is also used for creating the input-output statistics out of the, the packets which are being sent within the network inside the vanet. 
Now, the field uh, test scenarios were that we used two cars. Each of the car was equipped with uh, a GPS module, which collected the coordinates, the latitude and longitude points, to know the position of the car. And uh, each car had a laptop and an external Wi-Fi adapter and an antenna. Since the antenna could not be connected directly to the laptop, so we used an, uh, uh, an interface between the antenna and the laptop using an external Wi-Fi adapter. These are the parameters which were used. The mobility was of, in static and dynamic. That is, the cars were also tested in a static mode when they were not moving, and in dynamic with uh, varying speeds. The equipment used was based on 802.11 PG, and the type of program was socket programming, which acts as an application programming interface between the two processes of the sending and receiving being done on both sides of the car. So each of the car is broadcasting and receiving at the same time. And these messages being broadcast are UDP packets. And the number of packets for each test was 4,000 packets. We had fixed it in the program. The frequency range was 2.4 to 2.462 gigahertz. And the beacon frequency, that is the number of packets being sent per second, was 10 packets. And each, each packet size was 512 bytes. Coming to the results, first we did a static test scenario in which two cars were used. Each of the car was sending and receiving, as I mentioned. And on receiving a packet each time, the car will, the, the laptop program, which was in the C program, will calculate the internode distance, and it also saves the number of packets it has sent and it received from the other end of the car, from the other car. So this is the result of the GPS collected internode distance that we received, and the actual distance which we measured between the cars using a laser range finder. So as you can see, the orange one denotes the actual distance, and the blue color denotes the distance measured by the GPS. It's quite evident that both the distances were not, there was not a lot of difference between the two. On an average, you can say an error of less than 6% was found. Next, we found the PDR with varying distances between the two static cars, which were not moving. So as we increased the distance from 10 meters to 20, 200, 200, and then we did up to 450 meters, and we can see that the packet delivery ratio was falling, and it had a degrading trend. And it's pretty obvious that as the distance increases, there will be more packet loss. The next result was uh, when we did tests with two cars on the expressway, that is in a mobile, in a mobile scenario where, where the cars are dynamically moving. We set the speed first for 100 kilometers for both the cars, and so the relative speed between the two cars was not, was not very high. And, and the next test we did, uh, there were a total of five experiments performed, and these are the results. And then we changed the speed to 120 kilometers per hour, and the results were as follows. So from this, it's quite clear that the increased distance did not affect the PDR much. Uh, it's because the relative distance between, the relative speed of the two cars is almost the same. So it didn't have much problems in, in establishing the connection each time. This is the result which we obtained from the Wireshark software. And uh, the above graph shows how the internode distance was varying on the, on the expressway tests. We can see that as the distance was increasing, the internode distance between the two cars was increasing, the PDR, which is shown in the lower graph, was falling. And again, as the, the internode distance was decreasing, the PDR was quite high. So it is, again, a better uh, proof that with increasing internode distance, the PDR falls. Finally, in conclusion, the, I can say that FOSS tools are a very promising approach for evaluating bandits and implementing them into field test scenarios. And it is a very reliable method to validate and compare the results obtained from field test scenarios with those of the results obtained from the simulation software, scenario, simulation software results, which have been obtained all these years. A lot of uh, field experiments are yet to be done. And uh, I think that the open source software has provided a lot of flexibility in order to change the software programs according to our requirements. The future of field tests and vanets is quite bright, and uh, people can actually 
design and test some more efficient routing protocols in the future. And these, a lot of road safety applications can also be implemented using the field tests and the equipment. Thank you. And if you have any questions.